What did you eat for breakfast? For breakfast today, I ate cereal. Welcome to Music on Your Own Terms, the podcast that aims to help musicians develop an entrepreneurial mindset through interviews, as well as discussing resources, concepts, successes, and more. Providing a platform to talk about negative emotions such as anxiety and depression in order to help overcome them in the context of music and reduce the social stigma. This is episode 137. This episode is sponsored by Ignite Your Music Career. You may remember in episode 90, I chatted to Craig Dodge about sync licensing and how he makes a living through writing music for TV, video games, and film. Musicians all over the world subscribe to Ignite Your Music Career and earn more royalties, more upfront sync fees, and more recurring revenue from their music. Whether you're a composer, singer-songwriter, band, beatmaker, or instrumentalist, your music can be earning you more money. Internationally acclaimed composer, musician, and music educator Craig Dodge has licensed his music in more than 1,000 TV show episodes, films, video games, and ads all over the world, and he will show you how you can too. Ignite gives you the information you need in a simple, accessible format, and you learn at your own pace. For just $6 a month, you get a video lesson each week on topics related to music licensing, from writing techniques to how to find your markets, and everything in between. You also get tools and activities to build the skills you need to be successful, and each lesson includes a royalty-free sound pack to download and use in your own music. The key to success in the music business today is to diversify your sources of revenue. Ignite will show you how. For more information or to subscribe to Ignite, visit the website at taris-studios.com or click the link on musiconyourownterms.com.
just heard Not Enough from this week's guest, Rascal Wack. In this episode, I talk to Stathis Skalabakis of the Greek band Rascal Wack, who released their new album, Maliveni, earlier this year. Stathis talks about what the title means, how the concept threads through the songs on the album, and the specific way the band writes music to maintain a coherent sound. We also learn about Stathis' day job as a lawyer, how acting classes shaped his philosophies on life, and how Green Day shaped his tastes in music. If you enjoy the podcast and want to show your support, I'd be really grateful if you would consider signing up for the mailing list to stay in the loop with everything going on with the show. Just head over to musiconyourownterms.com and click the link. While you're there, you can also visit the store and grab some merch, or just buy me a coffee and help out with the running costs of the show. Thanks for listening. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. Today, I'm joined by Stathis Skellumpak... Back- Stathis Skalumbakis from the band <laughs> Rascal Whack, and I butchered that completely, but how are you doing, and, and welcome. Yeah, it, it's really nice being with you here. Thank you so much. And uh, don't worry about the the difficult pronunciation of, of my name. I'm going to say it again, because yeah. I said it before that uh, even great guys uh, misspell it, so <laughs> no worries. Awesome. So yeah, let's let's start with the band. You you uh, got introduced to me by my good friend Ria. She's That's right. working with some really great bands. So thank you, Ria. So let's dig into what the band sounds like. You know, what are you guys about, and uh, and then we'll get into the new album. Nice. Uh, so we're Rascal Wack. But by the way, before I say anything, because you're American, what do you think that Rascal Wack means? I'm actually not American. I have an American passport. I'm actually from England originally, but oh, okay. Rascal, well, Rascal is like a, a troublemaker. So I, the literal meaning that I would come up with is someone that basically goes around hitting people that make mischief. Okay, okay. <laughs> that, that's that's a way to look at it. But yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that's uh, one point of view that we wanted to. To have it, it sounds a little more punk rock that uh, than uh, what we are actually playing okay because uh, the band the band originally started with a couple of metalheads yep yeah spiros is our lead guitarist and he started the band with his first cousin chris mm-hmm. and uh, who's the bassist uh, still and uh, they started the band just uh, you know because they wanted to put their instruments again into use because they have stopped playing for some years, okay. you know, some some songs came up. Uh, so around 2012, they thought that this could form a band. So they started looking for people. I was the vocalist from day one. They they knew me, you know, from other friends from other bands. Mm-hmm. So they called me. We found a drummer. We found another guitarist. So we started the band. That's our intro. <laughs> awesome. The band is playing. It's ca- it's kind of difficult to describe what we play because you know there are so many influences for sure, and we've put our influences inside the the songs. So uh, I guess it's something. Uh, the main uh, part of it, I guess, it's kind of stoner, grunge, I guess. But uh, there are a lot of yeah. metal influences, some punk rock. I, I don't know if you heard it and <laughs> you think uh, it, it, yeah, did you come I mean, up with these influences. I I wrote down. Kind of a tool meets Alice in Chains meets Clutch, mm. and then there's but yeah, it's it's difficult to like really pinpoint. It's definitely got that stone or hard rock thing, but it's not, it's not like overly doomy. But it's yeah, it's got a lot of lot of different stuff. I guess you just have to listen to it. But I mean, if you like tool, Alice in Chains, and Clutch, I think you'll 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 like it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you've pinpointed that uh, pretty accurately. <laughs> So, yeah, you gave us a bit of history on the band. You you put your first album out in 2015 called Game Roller. Is that correct? That's right. So, yep. And now you've got a new album out. Just Was it released in May of this year? I think it was. Uh, in June. In June. June. 24 June. So it's called, I'll let you take over. <laughs> Maliveni. Maliveni. I, I really like the description, but I'll let you tell the story of uh, what the album's about. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So Maliveni... Actually, is a place uh, near Athens. Mm-hmm. It means uh, cedar forest, and it was actually a cedar forest. It's it, it's not that anymore. It's uh, it's some hills, you know, and 
it's uh, it's not populated it's just a region and uh, really nearby there's actually a forest so it's a place of serenity you know you can go for walking the the lyrics i wrote most of the lyrics of the songs when i'm writing lyrics i'm sorry i'm, I'm getting into something else to you know sure. to describe why it's called malibeni because i guess that's uh, the main yeah. part of your question absolutely so uh, the lyrics uh, there was a there wasn't an idea behind all of this i i wrote the lyrics for each song separately and what i felt uh, at the time and i, I mean that some of the songs are are ready from uh, 2015 Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've passed through a lot of emotions, a lot of faces in my life writing these songs. But I tried to, you know, when we had the album ready, I tried to find, uh, you know, their contact point of all the songs. Mm-hmm. And this was uh, something like this. Uh, it was uh, my need to to get away from the city, the city that I, in my, in my mind, I've described something like Gotham City. You know, it's, it's a city of lies, of deceit, but at the same time, it's the place where you can, you know, you can move forward, you can be a better person, you can do good for your society, and you're not a loner, you know, somewhere else, not thinking about the problems, you're there and you're trying to solve the problems, but at the same time, there's a lot of harassment and lying and deceive, and you and you need to, you know, pick your, the right choices here. So Maliven is not actually far away from the city. It's not a place that you go and you lose yourself from the problems, but rather it's it's a place that you can go and you know clear your head, get ready for the next day, for the next struggle, and go back to business. Mm. So uh, that's something that I I guess uh, you know was a contact point for for each song. So Malivani was the last thing made for the album. Actually, it, it wasn't an idea you know that pre existed from the songs. Awesome. So what do you guys do? Do you, do you guys actually make a living from music or do you all kind of do this as a as a secondary thing? <laughs> Not even a secondary. I mean, uh, we are actually giving money to our music. We are not able yet to to make a living out of it. Not even, uh, you know, uh, make some money out of it. Not even that. Right, and it's it's okay because it's kind of difficult. We knew it from the first time to begin with, but um, we're trying uh, with this new album. We have kind of reinvented our ways of the way we see the band, the band, and uh, we're actually trying to make something out of it. Mm -hmm. And if it's not money, then it's uh, live shows, it's opening big names, and enjoying the most we, we. taking the, the most we can out of music. And this is not about money. This is more about enjoying uh, what we're doing, playing it live, uh, connecting with people. Mm. That's the, the main reason that we are even uh, started to to push this album, you know, through marketing, through RIA. Right. That helped us a lot. Awesome. So but what, do you, what would you say that each member kind of brings to the band outside of the music? Mm. As far as the business side or maybe, you know, somebody... Somebody is a uh, producer, or you know, what 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 kind of what kind of skills do people bring to the band? Okay, so outside of the music, I guess uh, we, we're all trying to figure this out because uh, it's and every one of us tries every single day to to push the limits to to see what what we can learn from it because everything is new to us, mm-hmm. you know. Because in in our first album, we didn't really care about marketing. So we didn't even register the album through the UP, uh, UPS, I, I guess it's called, uh, the special code you get uh, through oh, the um, platforms. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, I f- I've forgotten the acronym, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. Yes, uh, we didn't even register it. So uh, you, you, can, you, you can understand the way that we were thinking about the band. It, it was just for fun. Right now, I was the one trying to figure out how, you know, all the legal issues because I'm a lawyer. And I registered the album. I find everything about uh, Bandcamp, uh, Spotify, and everything we needed to know about them. And uh, Spiros, who is uh, the closest friend with Ria from the band, is the one trying to pick up the marketing thing and uh, help Ria with ev- and everything, anything she wants and can to you know, to make the most out of it. Mm -hmm. Our bassist, Chris, I I guess he's the one that helped our producer 
the most with uh, how we wanted the sound to actually sound like and where we wanted to go as a band music wise mm-hmm. so i guess uh, the basis was closest to the producing part awesome so one one question that's been coming up lately from different interviews I've been doing is is if you if you weren't able to do music even as a as, you know a hobby what would you be doing? <laughs> like uh, what other hobby would I pick up? If yeah, if if music is your creative outlet, which obviously you you, you know mm. you're the lyricist, so you you get a lot of stuff down on paper. What would you be doing instead? If you couldn't do music, if I couldn't music, I couldn't put things in paper because obviously, uh, since I'm putting things in paper, I could say I will be writing. Right. But uh, if I if I couldn't do any any of these, uh, it's kind of difficult. But you know, I'm a I'm a guy that uh, you know d- does a lot of stuff combined. I, I'm the, I'm the typical guy that does a lot of stuff. Nothing in perfection, but a lot of stuff. So I'm. Uh, I would be surfing more. I would be. I'm currently having a tennis podcast in Greece. Okay. I'm watching tennis. I love tennis, and um, I, I would be, I guess, uh, more into that or into athlet athletic uh, things that I'm actually doing. Awesome. And actually, that's the second time in two interviews someone's brought up tennis. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So. How did you get on? Get how did you get into singing in the first place? Like, what started it for you, and and what age did you start getting into music? Well, music uh, w- was something I loved uh, from when I remember myself actually, and I was singing from when I remember myself. It, it was something so natural to me to sing, and I, I wasn't even bothered that there were people around or anything. I was singing; it's something that I loved. But into music. Uh, you know, like uh, the rock music that I, uh, it was the love of my life. I was, I was currently, I, I was in love with it by the, the first sight. My first sight of the rock music actually was uh, Green Days. Okay. It was Green Days, the album Warning. Mm-hmm. And it was given to me by a friend of mine in my birthday when I was uh, nine years old. I, I was listening to it like uh, every single day. It was uh, beautiful to my ears. You know, punk rock was uh, always the genre that put me in, in, in into music. Mm-hmm. I, I love this uh, riff, the power chords, the liveliness of the music, the crunchy, the crunchy voices. It was something that I, I instantly fell in love with. So th- that's how I, I started going into music. And uh, in my first years of singing, I was in bands that only played punk rock. Awesome. All right, so I, I get to a point in my interview that I like to ask the same questions to everyone. So the first one is, what significant negative experience have you overcome and what did that teach you? Oh, you know, it's a difficult question for me because uh, I have a, a whole different philosophy of life. One difficult time for me was when I was in the presidential guard mm-hmm. because, you know, here in Greece we have obligatory military service and I was appointed to the presidential guard where it was a real difficult time because you know we had an education really rough people were fainting and nothing happened they were like come on come on get up get up it's nothing Uh, he he just fainted so I was like what the fuck is going on here (laughs) it it wasn't really my thing but I have a way of turning uh, these difficult situations into positive stuff Uh, I guess uh, I'm, I'm I'm taking lessons from it, but I'm doing it at the time of, of, of that they are happening. So I I, mm. I guess I didn't actually experience it like a negative period of my life. My God, what I'm doing. So I, I maybe, uh, yes, one one seriously negative period was when I I, I had the acting le- acting lessons when I was a student mm-hmm. in law school. Uh, for five years, we were having, uh, you know, uh, we had a theater. We had, uh, how, how you say, it? performances, shows. Like uh, recitals? Yes, exactly. And uh, my teacher there, Leandros, he, he was from Cyprus. And he was a really, we were really deeply connected. He was uh, like a philosopher. And mm. he, he literally, he opened my eyes, both in music and in acting. But at the same time, when my eyes opened really fast, 
it meant a lot of things to me because uh, you know I it was the first time I thought about death, about the whole concept of dying. Mm. Uh, until this moment in my life, which is really curious because I was like uh, 20 years old, it was all happening inside uh, a couple of months. So uh, I experienced a lot of things. Uh, I, I, I matured immediately. Mm. And that, that was a period, you know, both negative and positive, And it really changed me. Many people that knew me before this, when they, you know, met me, when they saw me after, after this period, they were like, boy. Hey man, you've changed. Yeah, more serious, more mature. I don't know. That well, that was a, a critical time for a crucial period for for me and the way I saw things. Great, thank you for sharing. Yeah. What major positive experience has given you the push to follow this journey? Uh, I guess I, I talked uh, too much already, so uh, I would say bo- uh, the acting lessons there because uh, afterwards and after everything happened there. I was a whole different person with a different mm. view of things. My, my mind has broadened. Uh, I listened to a lot of different music. I did a lot of different things that actually made me understand about mistakes, about the good things in life, what you should be chasing, what you should be dreaming about. So I guess, yes, this acting classes at the period at that period really benefited me. Fantastic. Yeah, I I didn't catch on earlier when you said you were a, you were a lawyer. Is that correct? Yep. Oh, okay. So yes, definitely want to pick your brain. There is first of all, what do you practice in your day job, and you know how has that helped you in the? You, you already said that it that you started uh, learning about the legal stuff in terms of registering your song, but how else has that helped you in the music? Yeah, uh, difficult to say because our music is. Uh... <laughs> A really difficult music to it's not it's not the kind of music uh, business wise that has so much to do with legal issues right because uh, you know I have clients that currently big names in in the Greek industry mm-hmm. like uh, in the Greek pop industry like uh, Lenny Fureira, which is a uh, she's a uh, nowadays you know she she went second to Eurovision she she's a uh, a really well known international singer and. Mm-hmm. Her legal issues, I know them very well, but her legal issues will never be my legal issues because it's a whole different uh, business. Right. When you're, you're talking about the pop industry, you know, even even the big names in our in, in our music genre are still earning their money through live shows and merchandise, which is not their thing in pop industry. So uh, I don't think that the legal issues. Uh, are so difficult uh, and I, I i couldn't say that uh, my day job really helped a lot uh, in, in in you know the aspects of the band okay fair enough the the final question i normally ask is what does music mean to you uh i, I wouldn't say everything because that wouldn't be true there are so many beautiful things in life besides music but uh it truly means it, it's my maliveni mm. Music is my Malivani, actually. Uh, you know, it's it's not. A, I I don't want to run from my problems and get away from them. I, I want to play music, and this time is the time that I clear my head and I find all my solutions. The time that you know, I, I, I I'm actually breathing when I'm when I have my difficulty in breathing my everyday life. This is my medicine. Mm-hmm. So it's not everything, but it's whew, a lot more than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fantastic. That's that's a great analogy, I guess. It's yeah, music is meditation. That's fantastic. Yeah, for sure. I think I think for everyone. Right. So, if people want to get in touch, listen to your music, uh all that good stuff, where do they go? Uh I guess all the <laughs> all the known places, uh, Bandcamp, uh, you can search us in Bandcamp or Rascal Wack, Malibeni is the album. And uh, you can purchase it there digitally uh, or maybe by hard copy. We have uh, registered ourselves in Apple Apple Store, in Spotify and everywhere. Only the second album, Maliveni, because it's, it's the one that we're proud of uh, right now, actually. So uh, we're, um, you can find it in Spotify and Apple. And through Facebook, you can contact us. Uh, we are 
we're currently receiving a lot of messages or reviewing our album and everything. And it's uh, really nice having, uh, you know, connecting with people all around the world and concerning our music. It really means a lot to us to have people from all, literally from everywhere in the world, from all around the world. And it's a really nice feeling. So you can contact us anytime at Facebook. Don't worry, we'll answer it. Fantastic. So at the end of the interview, I like to play a song from the band I'm, I'm interviewing. What song off the album would you like to play? Oh, I'm going to say a few words uh, for the for the song that I, I, I would like you to play. Sure. Not because it's my favorite, but it's uh, it's my favorite in the way that was uh, composed. Mm-hmm. You know, because everyone put their idea without us understanding it. Th- there was a song that everybody had put an idea that, gave life to the idea and without it it didn't sound actually good but all together it sounded really good and every every instrument had the you know their time it feels like the instruments are breathing in this song and we actually think it's a it's a it's our best work together because of our chemistry and how the the song was actually made it's called the fly okay i would like you to play that if if it's absolutely one song that you're going to play that's great. Yeah, actually, you know what? I, I will ask you one more question. How, is that representative of how you normally write? Or is it like somebody comes with a full form song to the practice mm. room? Or is it kind of a bit of everything? Okay, that, yeah, that's a nice question, actually. And it, 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 would be, it would mean a lot to me if uh, someone hears it and maybe helps someone, you know, some bands with uh, the way they're currently creating their music Mm -hmm. so uh, we have come up with the idea that when someone comes up with a song you know ready it's never it's it's never really going to work uh, except Mm -hmm. you're you know if you're some of the few greats that we we we've come to know all these years in in the rock industry what we want to do is uh, make a simple riffs that uh, you know uh, without connecting them we we Mm -hmm. put them uh only only studio when uh, when we rehearse together we actually listen to the riffs uh, and we are we're trying to make a riff that is going to work and when we are actually satisfied with what we're hearing we start to build on the song okay so i'm singing um abracatabra i don't know what i'm singing uh, lyric wise but I'm trying to find melodic voices. The others are trying to find everyone their mm-hmm. instrument, and we're kind of, we are building the song. But it actually all starts uh, in ninety percent of the time from a riff that we all together have come up with, and we, you know, we, we say that this riff can actually build a song. We build, we can build a song, mm-hmm. you know, uh, on this riff. This is how we do it. <laughs> wow, that, no, that's that's a great way of going about it because I think that really keeps your sound kind of central because a lot of times with bands like somebody will come up with a whole song and it doesn't match what the rest of the band have done and it it feels too i mean sometimes it works it's really good but yeah that that's a great way of keeping your uh your identity kind of coherent for every song so that's, that's really great so all right well this has been a fantastic conversation i really appreciate you know you taking the time and talking to me today and uh you know, who knows? Maybe uh, see you over here, and you you get on some festivals or something, and that would be really awesome. And if if it actually happens, oh, thank you so much. And if it does, if it actually happens, uh, be sure that we're going to contact you. Awesome. Grab a grab a uh, a couple of pints. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you so much for listening. I'd really appreciate it if you would leave a review on iTunes or your favorite podcast platform as this really helps get the word out about the podcast so other musicians can benefit from the awesome knowledge that my guests are sharing. The more the musicians community collectively learns, the stronger we will become. A rising tide lifts all ships. This episode is sponsored by the Skinny Armadillo Printing Company in Fort Worth, Texas, offering a full range of apparel decoration and promotional items such as screen printing, embroidery, laser engraving, and much more. The Skinny Armadillo is now offering a merch fulfillment service including on-demand printing and a custom-built web store so you can concentrate on your music and running your business as a musician. 
Visit theskinnyarmadillo.com or call 817-546-1430 to learn how The Skinny Armadillo can help you take your merch to the next level. Keep pushing the needle and be excellent to each other. This is Roscoe Wack with The Fly.